Welcome to the Coffee with Creators podcast, a casual conversation with creators about life and experiences. I'm your friend and your host, Michael. Today we have photographer Alex Miller on the podcast, also known as Liquid Verve on social media. Alex is very popular on TikTok and Instagram for her unique photography style that spans between traditional and fantasy. I learned a couple of very interesting things about Alex that are not apparent on her social media channels, such as her love for painting and psychology. Also, you have to excuse my voice as I had a sore throat that day. But anyway, I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I did making it. Here's Alex Miller. So, Because a lot of people are saying, do I need to bring coffee? I'm like, no, you don't. I brought coffee just, you know, because I yeah, have coffee. At least your own brand, which I appreciate. <laughs> Yeah, I'm drinking tea right now because I just got over a really bad cold and um, mm-hmm. my voice is kind of shot. And I remember last night I was telling my wife, I said, I have a, a guest tomorrow for a podcast. And I'm like, I don't want to cancel because I'm sure she's really busy. And I'm oh, like, we I could really, have rescheduled. I, no, I don't want to. I was too excited. I've been Aww. hyping myself up for, for a while now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I'm honored. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, you know what? Actually, this is a good thing because... I tend to talk too much. Me having this 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 situation right now, I feel like it's advantageous so that I don't, <laughs> I, don't I don't talk too much. I'll let you. Yeah. So, Alex, welcome awesome. to the podcast. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I was really surprised that you actually responded to my email. The reason why is that I've actually reached out to a couple of uh female creators out there and interestingly enough most of them don't respond and i can understand why but it's i feel like it's a little unfortunate that it's it's that's the case so i just want to say i really appreciate you you know finding the time because i'm like wow you know she actually responded so (laughs) again thank you i just want to say thank you of course my pleasure again i'm so happy to be here yeah so um you are in los angeles right yes i'm based in la i've been living here for almost 10 years now 10 years and where where were you from originally i'm originally i'm fully german so i'm like super german spreadsheets cars soccer (laughs) everything um yeah ultra german um always speeding it's pretty bad um Yeah, I I was born and raised in Berlin and then I moved here when I was, um, I first moved to California when I was 16, moved to LA when I was 17. I went to school here and, well, college. Mm -hmm. And now I'm working as a full-time photographer. How do you feel? I mean, that's a really interesting, let's start there, okay? So (laughs) you and I share something in common in the sense that we were not born and raised in the US. I was actually- Where were you raised? Yeah, I was actually originally from the Philippines I was a little bit older. That's a big move. Yeah, it's a big move. Um, Mm -hmm. I was a little bit older when I moved here. I was, well, I was 21. No, not 21, 22. And so I've been here for more than, yeah, for a while now. Um, And so I kind of understand like that Mm -hmm. viewpoint, but I'm really curious to see or hear how you feel about that. It's because it's such a weird topic to talk about because not everyone can relate to it. Right. You know what I mean? But it's it's a little specific. Most people don't move nine time zones when they're young adults, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very true. I, it, I guess what I'm trying to determine is, you know, finding your own identity. Do you still think of you as Alex? I'm, I'm German. You know what I mean? It's like, obviously, yes. Right. But it's like, do you call Los Angeles now home? I guess maybe that's, maybe that's what I'm um, trying to get at. That's a, that's a really funny question because actually I, um, my name, I've never said this on a podcast before. My name's not actually Alex at all. That's not my name. Oh, okay. My name's Julia. Oh, interesting. <laughs> you know, people are like, oh, is it short for Alexandra? I'm like, it's short for Julia. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so my name is Julia Alexa Miller. Alexa's my middle name. It's not going to go great because I have one of those and they're going to, she's going to start speaking to me in a second. Oh. Um, Amazon. Yeah. Um, And so when I lived in Germany, I went by Julia and then I moved here and I completely changed. And that's why it's funny that you say identity shift associated with name. I changed my name as a whole. So I go by Alex now. That's even, that's even harder for me to, to, to try to relate to now (laughs) because I never had to change my name, but that's, that's crazy. So how does that feel? How does that, I mean, you, you literally, to me, from the outside looking in, it feels like you literally had to 
be someone else mm -hmm. or you are completely someone else at this point. I completely, I, I changed so much about my expression, my personality. Um, and now, you know, 10 years later, I feel like I'm finally coming back around to some of the things that I was and I enjoyed when I was a child and a teenager, but it was something that I sort of rejected for a long time and just completely overhauled. So now I'm kind of finding the balance between the, the original and then the new, um, created and built personality and, and person. So it's been a very interesting journey. <laughs> <laughs> I can yeah. only imagine. So uh, does this change, um, th this going back to your childhood, to your, to, to your original version, I guess, does this also include your photography style, your creative, your creative, your creativity, or is that something new you kind of just pick, picked up along the way? So I think my photography somehow was always an accidental expression of that old personality. Because um, if you'd witnessed my personality over the last 10 years, I'm uh, my entire closet is black. I have no color in there. I am I wear mostly men's clothes. I, um, I mean, Alex is also a very gender neutral name, I would say. I have sort of more of a masculine personality. Um, I'm kind of loud and kind you know, a little bit on the aggressive side. Um, but then I feel like my photography is the exact opposite of that. It's very whimsical and feminine and sweet and soft and sort of, uh, glowy and even a little childish sometimes because it's about these characters and this like fantasy play. So I feel like I'm slowly becoming more like my photography, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. You are like a walking, um, Juxt, just uh, I can't even say the word right now. Juxtaposition. Yes, exactly. Sorry, <laughs> my voice is completely shot. But oh no, no, I, it's it's so fascinating to hear that though because I feel like as people when we when we experience life we go through life we you know life throws us all these different things that kind of forces us to change, um, be it just as a means of survival or mm -hmm. just you know to try to fit in right. and. Along that, I, I maybe I'll just speak for myself, but during that process for me personally, I felt that I was being forced to be someone else. But in reality, after years, I realized that I was just rediscovering who I really am. Mm -hmm. And you know, what came out is basically this right now. Like if you met me maybe 20 years ago, you would say, what, this guy? Like, he's not gonna talk to random people, you know, <laughs> let alone invite them to, to for a little chat. <laughs> Definitely not me. Now, I mean, like, if I was the kid who was always quiet in the classroom, like, if, if I could hide in between the walls, I would. <laughs> yeah, that was me. So, this is very different. And so, a lot of people even asked me, they said, um, did you know that you were gonna do this? Or mm -hmm. how do you, how, you know, you're so skilled or, some even said talented, which I don't like because I honestly don't feel I'm talented. What I feel I am, what I know I am, is that I was determined enough mm -hmm. to learn. Determined and persistent, right? Right, exactly. And I so that's in that I, over talent. I think that's the message that I want to impart to like um, other people because to me, I feel like if they understand that, then everything is a little bit more approachable. Everything is right. not as scary and. Don't people don't like, for example, you, Alex, I look at your work and I'm like, I am never going to be like that good. Right. It, so that <laughs> oh, alone, <you> definitely <laughs> that statement I alone, just learn, you know, exactly. Like it, it stops me from growing because mm -hmm. I've already accepted that I'm not good enough. Right. So let's talk about that, Alex. Let's talk about your, your photography journey, because I did a little bit of, um, I try not to do some research at all. So because I want the, the questions, the, uh, the, the, yeah, the, the questions come in, uh, organically. Like I want to be as curious as possible. And so I looked at your Instagram feed and back in 2017, I think your style was very different. Oh yeah. Very, very different. And it did evolve. Style. So let's just call it more conventional, um, portrait mm -hmm. photography. Mm -hmm. And then it evolved into something that's a little, definitely a little bit more whimsical. So there's a lot of, um, um, I, I described it as like dreamlike, mm -hmm. so it's very dreamy. And so from that process, Alex, like how did you get to that from, from regular uh, portrait photography to kind of something like that? And back then, I'm kind of aware of this, like back then, 2017, 2016, 
um, even, people weren't so much into like that type of portrait photography. Right. Everyone was more of like the conventional. Um, classic stuff. Exactly, classic stuff. So mm -hmm. can you share a little bit more about that experience? Sure, I mean, um, at the time I, I, I started social media when I started photography. Um, I knew nothing really about social media at the time. I had done YouTube before. I'd built um, a pretty big YouTube channel, but it was a totally different topic. So I was new to social media, I was new to photography, and I set out pretty early with an intention. And this is something that I definitely recommend to people when they're first getting into an art is within the first year or so to find an intention of like why they're even creating this particular art like why would you do photography instead of going into music or you know and what are you trying to do with your photography and and for me and I wrote it down I've, I you know I found this kind of recently which was then very funny to to rediscover I'd written down I want to create um I want to create portraits that offer a little bit of relief from reality a temporary relief from what we're experiencing in our day-to-day -day lives I wanted to take us out of that and into something that can just feel like a dream Mm -hmm. um, even just for a second and with my first work I tried that and I failed and I failed many 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 times until I first you know started then creating work where when I looked at the finished product I really felt like that's what I had done I'd created something that was surreal enough but still realistic enough like it, it like rides a weird balance mm -hmm. you know um, of just just taking someone like one step to the side outside their usual line of life yeah and if so that makes sense yeah yeah to me it makes complete sense it, it's <laughs> you, what you actually said uh reminded me of a, of a conversation with a friend and i don't know i actually don't know why i've never really heard this before but i remember him saying Okay, okay, a little background on him. So he, he works at a corporate job, you know, regular top, you know, like regular guy. Let's just put it that way. He would never consider himself as a creative. And for okay. some reason, it feels he he feels like he doesn't belong in that field. Like he does not belong in the creative huh. field at all. So he feels like the his only purpose is to go to his job, which to him is okay. He doesn't hate it. But it's okay, but it doesn't, let's just say it's not his passion, right? So I asked him, I said, so what would you do if you, if you were given the chance, like money wasn't an, uh, an issue, time wasn't an issue, family or whatever isn't an issue, what would you be doing? And he said, he would be taking portraits. Huh. And I'm like, oh, okay, so he does have a camera. He takes mm -hmm. portraits occasionally. And mm -hmm. I said, so how do you why let's try to figure out like why do you want to take portraits is it just because you like doing it and what he said was really interesting kind of reminded me of what you just said mm -hmm. he said that to him and it's kind of embarrassing to admit he said that um he feels that his portrait style although he, he couldn't really define it yet but he wants his portrait style to be that of uh something that's so inspiring that when the person passes on that the family member would love to have that portrait Aww. yeah that's what i said i'm like because he's like well this sounds very morbid i'm like it sounds morbid if you put it that way but if you look at the intention behind it mm -hmm. like the reasoning behind it like a timelessness to the to yes. the portrait that's really special exactly and so i'm like i feel like there's something there if you would mm -hmm. just give yourself the opportunity to explore it, mm -hmm. I think you might find something that you really like. And so right. listening to what you just shared, Alex, I feel like you just did that. You explored that, that side of you that you wanted to, to really figure it out. But I guess my question is, how long did it take you? Not as long as you would expect. Um, I also want to say it doesn't always have to turn into a full-time career. Mm -hmm. A hobby is just as emotional, valuable, emotionally valuable, maybe even more emotionally valuable than turning your passion into your income, you know, mm -hmm. and I happen to luck out and, and turn photography into a full time business. But even if I hadn't, I would still be creating the way I do now. So 
I would say from from the starting point where I took my first portrait to the point where I first looked at a portrait and said this came out the way I hoped it would, it was probably a year and a half, maybe okay. a year. Yeah. Um, and I was pretty inconsistent throughout that first year because I was still working in I was still working in film and television. I was still going to college. I was doing a bunch of other things. I was only shooting very sporadically, and um, yeah. So it's it's definitely I do think it is about intention, and the more clear it is where you're trying to go, the faster you'll get there. Instead of just you know running around trying to follow trends or other right. people or virality or something like that. Yeah. If you keep following those things, you're going to find yourself running in circles and you'll never arrive anywhere. And I feel like this is just me, but I feel like the more you try to follow what's what's popular, the more you lose a little bit about your uh, of yourself because you right, start of course. you start to look more like what other people are doing, right? Right. Did you find it's yourself at like, all in that situation at some point? Um sure, and I mean nobody can be completely oblivious to what's going on in the market if you're a part of the market, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're creating for a platform, it is important and good to know what is doing well in the platform in terms of format, in terms of content. Um, but to me, the content format, say for example, a real format, right? Real or TikTok format, very classic, behind the scenes video, final photos, that's a format. Mm -hmm. Me following the format that is successful for other people doesn't mean that I need to modify my actual artwork, i.e. the photo set that I create, to cater to anybody else's uh, style or trends right. or try to emulate anybody else. So we can, we can technically follow the market, but creatively remain true to ourselves. So it's almost like best practices, basically. Yes, yeah, it's it's kind of it it's kind of like compartmentalizing it a little bit, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Sorry. <laughs> oh no, are you my, okay? No, my straw just kind of got stuck. <laughs> no. Welcome to the Coffee Creators Podcast. This is how it is. <laughs> it's always it's okay, my milk is way too foamy, so now I just have mostly foam. So I don't know oh, how yeah. to feel about that either. You should have seen how this podcast has been like for the last. I, actually, no, I wish you don't see it at all. But for the last two years, it's like this just this conversation just reminded me that um, me doing this for the last two years, you would think that I would have less mistakes or less technical <laughs> issues. No, as a matter of fact, I feel like I have more. And so, <laughs> yeah, it's just part of the journey. It's part of the process. And I think that's why I Absolutely. enjoy it so much because it's like I'm being vulner vulnerable in the sense that I accept it. Like, hey, I'm not a podcast, like a perfect podcaster. I'm not a perfect host or interviewer or whatever you call it. I'm just a guy who's just really curious. And, you know, if someone were to ask me, hey, um, how did you get so, or why do you keep doing that? Like, if, even if you know that you're not, or what, what's, what's keeping you from, from stopping, I guess, doing this podcast? And the reason really is just because I'm not good enough. Like, I feel like the only reason I can, or the only way I can really improve is if I keep going, right? If I keep doing this. But right. um, this this mindset, I think, also applies to like the creative field, like to you, for example. Um, you talked about your journey in the first year. A year does sound like it's not a long time for someone else listening. But personally, I think a year is a long time. If you think about like all those mistakes, all those like um, realizations, I guess, all the, the, the like the, the thoughts of, um, I guess, like those, those doubts, self doubts, and even the doubters out there. Mm -hmm. That's a long time to try to get through all that, I, I don't know, like that swampy bit, that swampy area yeah, in life. Yeah, I mean, I think the best thing to do is just don't think about it, just do it. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like when you're first, um, there's that there's that analogy ish story um, of the teacher who runs a pottery class for a semester, right, and divides the class into two sections. One half of the class is supposed to create one perfect pot by the end of the semester, and the other class half of the class is supposed to create like one pot a week. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter how good it is, just turn it in at the end of the class. And of course, the class that's creating one a week 
creates considerably better, like a more high quality pots than the half that only created one pot. And that's because our perfectionism is our worst enemy. And when we're first starting something new, we just need experience. We just need to do it. We just need to get over the, the voice in our heads that's holding us back in every single moment that we're trying to press the shutter. Yeah. We just need to do it anyways and just need to make the choice, move on, make the next choice. If it sucks, it's fine. Not a big deal. If the photo comes out terribly, that's okay. Just make another one. Yeah. It's, yeah. I also am really happy that you kept your old photos in mm -hmm. your Instagram account because I found a lot of it's people. Important. It's very important. I agree mm -hmm. that they kind of hide the past. I don't know why. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. There's a date on it. People can see that it's not from yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's just interesting because I feel like me, not all, okay? I, not everyone that I follow do that, but I have seen some people who've done this and mm -hmm. It almost feels like they're ashamed to to show where they came from or how they Which is grew. strange, right? Very, very strange because I feel like that's the only way that you can actually really move forward is if you know where you came from. And so I'm glad you actually you you posted those pictures because I'm like, I hope Alex didn't hide some of her old photos because <laughs> I wanted to see the transition. Yeah, it shows my very very first pictures and posts that I ever shot and posted. Yeah, it's really it's really nice still. Like I honestly think they're still nice. Very Thanks. different. The style is just very different. Especially mm -hmm. now, um, I think it moved from whimsical to dreamy to a little bit more edgy, and it's uh, it's it's sometimes a yeah yeah, and it's very mm, how do I describe this? Uh, it reminds me so much of like concept art, and I say it in the highest compliment. Uh, because my brother and I, when we were growing up, we used to love buying these books. Okay, back then, back in the day, we didn't have the <laughs> internet. So, so when, when a movie came out, um, they would usually release these books at Barnes & Noble. And like, for example, I have this book, uh, Spider-Man, the first Spider-Man came mm -hmm. out with Tobey Maguire. When it first came out, um, there, there wasn't really an internet for me to, to download the, these pictures or these concept drawings and stuff. So I went to Barnes & Noble and bought this book and it was basically the art of Spider-Man, the movie, or the, the behind the scenes or the, uh, the making, I think it was the making of Spider-Man. And I would flip through this book, the things that I would really um, uh, attach to myself to are the one, or I'm really attracted to are the concept art because I feel like the concept art are the wildest and just like the most imaginative uh, designs. Basically, these are the designs that that the artist would bring forth to the director before the director says, no, that's not going to work or whatever. <laughs> but it has a lot of that character. So when I look at your stuff, it feels very concept art to me because I feel mm -hmm. like you're really trying to put something else out there other than just a pretty picture. So I guess that's the Thank best you. way that I could describe it. That's and, such a nice compliment. Wow. And that, that's really how I feel. And that's that's why when I when I fol started following you a few months ago, I'm like, I, I, I'm trying to put myself in that situation. So this is go this goes to like the next question that I have for you. Um, what how do you what's your process? Like, do you just wake up in the morning and be like, all right, I'm going to I'm going to do a Spider-Man uh, type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> what's the process? Here? <laughs> No, I'm much more German than that, so I, I have lists for everything. <laughs> no, I'm not. I wish I was spontaneous. I'm trying to be more spontaneous in, you know, in, in my personal life, which is cool. Um, but artistically, I'm, I'm not very spontaneous. I'm very much a planner. I'm very much... Um, I keep a list of video ideas. I keep a list of photo ideas, photo set ideas, single photo ideas. And I... Um, I also, I keep working with the same models over and over because mm -hmm. I believe in long-term relationships and I believe in the creative potential of good communication just really being so much higher than like a first-time interaction. Um, so a lot of models also come to me with pitches. They'll be like, oh my gosh, I watched this movie. Can I show you some of the screen caps? It's just really inspiring visually and I would like to create something like that or, you know, or we'll go see a movie together or something. And so the concepts are kind of, they come from all over the place often. For me, it's like film, television, um, a lot of music lyrics, and then just a lot of like old paintings. Mm -hmm. um, 
a lot of like the romantic era big into it both um in terms of classical music um as well as paintings and so yeah any of that again i, I keep many 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 lists for pretty much everything in my life but specifically for concepts and then i'll kind of just look at it and just see like what feels the most urgent what feels the most inspiring what do i have an immediate visual association with and then i'll go into working on that or if there's something seasonal you know yeah. obviously contingent on weather yeah. or contingent on um like relevant and upcoming holiday and then I'll start conceptualizing it. I'll usually put that concept either into a document or make a Pinterest board with visual inspiration. I don't, I try not to model after other photographs. Mm -hmm. I try to only draw inspiration from other art forms um, if I am putting together visual inspiration. So then it'll be, you know, graphic design, concept art, um, again, film and television, uh, comic books, anything like that. It's time for a quick break, but when we come back, Alex shares some of her other passions and interests other than photography and what it's like to shoot portraits at unconventional locations. Stay tuned. Working from home definitely has its perks. One of them being is that I don't have to sit in a lifeless, boring cubicle. I know for a fact that a little inspiration can really liven up my workday, so I've become intentional with the things I surround myself with. But inspiring doesn't have to only mean nice to look at, because they can be functional as well. So I'm urging you to check out Grovemade's beautiful collection of desk accessories. From their precision machined aluminum pens to their beautifully crafted laptop docks, you can find something that will organize your desk and inspire your work. I personally have a handful of their products in my office, and I really love them. The design and craftsmanship make each piece feel special, and that's because Grovemade wants you to build your dream workspace so you can get your best work done. Visit grovemade.com and save 10% on your first purchase by using the promo code MICHAEL10 at checkout. That's M-I-C-H-A-E-L-1-0 to save 10% on your first purchase. You mentioned and that you came from the um, television production, movie production mm -hmm. side. Can you speak a little bit more about that one? Yeah, so so I studied that. So I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts in film and television. Um, and I shot a web series for three or four years while I was in college. And that was, you know, that was then... Once I stopped doing that was when I went full-time in photography. So there was a little bit of overlap. So did you pivot, built, basically? Yeah, it was kind. Of, it was kind of just like a weird swerve. So it was very cool because all of the all of the technical knowledge that I acquired in college, in terms of lighting, directing, composition, you know, coloring, um, uh, directing models, casting, all of that kind of process, um, even some of the legal stuff, I was able to just apply to still photography. It's all pretty much ninety percent the same thing. Mm -hmm. So that was really cool, and that that saved me a lot of time in study yeah <laughs> that's yeah. that's 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 actually really good that definitely i imagine that would that would help a lot and um it was, it was great you mentioned that uh, you worked with a lot of um uh like the same models in the mm -hmm. that you worked for in the past because i also believe in the same thing i feel like um there's a reason why we go back to like our favorite restaurant our favorite mm -hmm. um our favorite vendor our favorite uh you know that stuff and that that also applies to like clients client work um it's all about relationship and i feel like the stronger the relationship is the more effective you become as a team and the more effective you are the more um i guess cohesive the the outcome becomes and it just it just looks much better and i noticed that like the models that you work with at least on your instagram um they are of the same person and so there's one that there's one that I couldn't stop laughing because it's like I can never picture myself doing this, but you went into was it Lowe's? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To do like a, a um a really crappy um location shoot challenge or something like that, and you were you were by the uh, uh what was it like the swatches I think inside uh -huh. Lowe's, and you were taking portraits. Uh, of of the model and I'm like I don't know how I can get myself into that situation how did that feel did you just literally just walk in did you were people looking at you asking you questions how was that like? um that was the last section that we shot because we shot in a couple of different areas in the store first okay. and 
um, that was the last one that we shot because we didn't know if we were going to get kicked out or not. And it's different from place to place. I've shot in a couple of locations. I also recently shot like a Spider-Man set in a Ralph's. Um, <laughs> so that was cool. Cause we wanted to, cause I've been doing a series of like superheroes do ordinary things. So we had Spider-Man and she was all like kind of beaten up and her suit was torn and she was just holding like three huge pints of ice cream. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so that was the same thing. We we just kind of, it's kind of a gamble when you walk into a store if the employees are going to say something or not. And so with the swatches, that was the last thing we did because we were like, well, if they're going to kick us out, they better kick us out on our last <laughs> run. But they didn't say anything. They were just kind of watching. They were very amused. They kind of would like peek on by and be like, yeah. what's going on? <laughs> but yeah, I've, I, I'm have i trying to remember if I've actually ever been kicked out of... Because that was going to be my next question. Where were you ever anyway. kicked out? Mm. I've been kicked out of a furniture store. Yes. It was like um, a super snobby high-end furniture store. I'm not going to say the name because I own some of their furniture, <laughs> ironically. <laughs> um, but yeah, and we were just shooting iPhone photos and they were kind of vicious. Yeah, they were rude. Really? Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I get it. Pretty I get it. When, yeah. You sh I mean, you should be protective of your if your property, like your, the image. And um, I get it, yeah. I understand that. It's just funny yeah. because I remember when I was, uh, I think I think I was 21, no, 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 22 or 23, when I had a, a friend approach me and say, we should go to Ikea and shoot photos there. And yeah. this was before Instagram. This was before social media in that, you know, people were doing so many cool stuff like out in the open out in public mm -hmm. so just that idea gave me so much anxiety yeah it i re i still remember that like i never went through with it he's like i'm just gonna go by myself and sure enough he <laughs> did he started like taking photos of his i think his friend he brought his friend and mm -hmm. they were in ikea and they were using the mock-up rooms and stuff it was cool but it was almost like a personal type of like portfolio thing because there wasn't instagram to share it um, right. yeah, the photo said, but I thought that was just like really, really interesting and how brave of him to actually do that. Cause I remember him saying, well, if they kick us out, they kick us out. And I'm like, I mean, I guess that's true. Like that's the worst that could yeah, happen. Yeah. I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen? You're <laughs> yeah. not going to go to jail for shooting in a store, you know? Exactly. But I think, correct me if I'm wrong. Most of the time people are just nice, right? Yes, 90% of the time, or even 95% of the time, people are just kind of like, oh, what's happening here? They're just <laughs> curious and interested, and some people will stop and stare. So that's the most awkward part, is that the only problem is you can't get in anybody's way, because then you get in trouble, and you can't tell anybody to to leave. Right, okay. Because you, you can't, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's the issue. So if someone's going to stop and stare, they get to do that. So this, this so. is a little bit more of a personal question, but... You know, I hope it's not too personal, but oh, do I'm you, easy, yeah. Okay, do you have like a short temper when it comes to stuff like that? No, I'm really calm. I'm a very okay. calm person. Okay. I'd like to think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying I'm to get very... to know you. Like, okay, is Alex the type of like, all right, when Alex says do this, you better sh you better be sure you do it, or else, yeah, because that you're not you're not gonna want to see that. Oh, I mean, if I say do something and you don't do it, then it's probably not the most efficient way to go um yeah if i say do something you should probably do it because it's probably just that's that's a smart thing to do <laughs> okay <laughs> um no i'm kidding it's um i'm i'm pretty relaxed i'm pretty hard to offend generally um and i tell my models this because i i i need that honest communication i don't need somebody to look at the back of the camera and be like oh my god i love these photos and then hate them later right um, right so that's in the process but that's also and then, you know, if we are in the, if we are on public property and someone stops and stares, then I will very loudly tell them to move on. Okay. Get on with that day. <laughs> There's but a I lot wouldn't of... say that's a short temper. I would just say that's trying to protect the model because she's going to be much more uncomfortable with it than I am. I'm hiding behind the camera, but she's probably in, you know, God knows what kind of weird cosplay. So, so okay. So that's a really interesting point that you brought up. So um, I have this fear of heights. Okay. Okay. They're terrified of heights. No matter what I am, yeah, never mind. Just when it comes to heights, you know, let's forget about it. But oddly enough, when I'm looking through my camera lens, like I'm fine. So oh. whenever we're at a, a like a little um, area with a nice view, I, I remember we were at the Grand Canyon. I was just about mm -hmm. freaking out because it's oh like, my gosh. yeah, it's just like 
it, the That's vastness like, of it right. was just too crazy for me. So what I would do is I would peek through my camera and somehow I'm fine. So I'm curious, like that confidence that you have, is that something you built over time? Obviously you built that over time, but um, does it also have something to do with just you being behind the camera and knowing that you're not the one in costume in front of everyone else? Basically people who are walking around, they're not looking at you. They're looking at your right. model. Exactly. So that's why I do, I do believe that when a photographer is out in public, you know, not shooting in a studio, but shooting somewhere in the streets with a model, I do think the photographer is fully responsible for keeping the model safe and comfortable. Um, and if there are strangers that are getting in the way of that, then the photographer is responsible for alleviating that stress. That's okay. That's a very good point. I never really looked at it that way because if I'm obviously I'm not a model, but if, if I were in that situation, I would definitely feel vulnerable because I'm yeah. in costume and makeup and just exactly right. Okay. So and everybody's staring at you. So, so the model, it's not right either for the model to go, Oh, don't look at me. You know, that's a little weird. Mm -hmm. But then if the photographer does it as a third party, it's much more, it's, there's just a degree of separation. It's a little bit more diplomatic. Okay. Um, because that's not who the attention is on. And I will say I'm not perfect at this because sometimes I just don't notice, mm -hmm. um, you know, by sheer uh, cause of situation. Like if you're shooting the module and there's somebody behind you that is making eye contact with the module, then you're not going to pick up on it until the model says something. So right. um, Do you it's definitely good for us to stay as aware as possible of our surroundings. Right. Do you usually just go by yourself with the model or is there like a third person? Most of the time, it'll be the module, myself, and one person to help out. But okay. I'll have anything up to three people along on a shoot in terms of helping with lighting, holding a reflector, and shooting uh, behind-the-scenes video. Mm -hmm. um, once in a while, it'll just be the model and I. But I, I try to avoid those situations because it's really difficult to get behind-the-scenes video. Right. Okay, yeah. yeah. That, that's so much, so many things to juggle at that point. It's a lot. Yeah, it's Pose a lot. here. To, yeah. Do that. Hold on, let me capture this reel. <laughs> just right. way too and many let me things. Hold the reflector, and let me also, <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work great. Okay, okay, okay. Now I feel, I kind of feel a little bit better because I'm like, it's like, how did you do it? Like, it's just her, but yeah. So yeah, that makes kind usually, of, it kind of makes more sense to me. So, all right. But but definitely, if there, you know, if there is someone assisting, then it's definitely not their responsibility responsibility to to like manage and organize the setting. Mm -hmm. It's, they're just, they're just there for support. But again, as the photographer, I feel like you do have to shoulder the responsibility for the stability and the stress level of the shoot overall, including disruptions. Okay, yeah, that makes perfect, perfect sense. Um, <clears throat> I wanna shift the conversation a little bit. So um, you obviously have experience in the social media space. You also mentioned that you had a YouTube channel or a separate YouTube channel. So this whole thing is not new to you. Let's just put it that way. Did you notice that, or am I assuming the right thing or? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So technically, I think I got into YouTube when I was like 15 or younger even. Yeah. I see, okay. Mm -hmm. So my question basically is one of the things that I noticed, sorry, I don't know if you noticed that, but my chair just went down. <laughs> Welcome to the Coffee Creators Podcast. <laughs> I triggered, <laughs> I triggered the little thing here at the bottom by accident, and I just oh, went no. like this, like an elevator. <laughs> Sorry, let me clear my voice real quick. <laughs> I swear, it happens to me all the time. No matter how much I try to prepare, something goes wrong, and I think that's just my signature. Something will be eventually like go sometimes. wrong. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that's okay. Um, so my question is, to me personally, when when I started my social media. I noticed that there's a lot of people, obviously you attract a certain type of audience, right? Mm -hmm. You also attract a certain type of, uh, I guess, creative. Uh, so for example, I kind of went into this tech space in on Instagram. And so all the friends that I that, that I started meeting are in the same field in a way that, you know, it's good. I'm definitely grateful. I'm, you know, super thankful to have met everyone. But I felt like at some point I was boxing myself in. So it's almost like uh, when I started Coffee with Creators two years ago, I was inviting friends. And a lot of these friends worked in the same field, did the same thing, attracted the same audiences. 
And the problem I had was that I felt like I felt like it was becoming, you know, this this our, this entire like our own clique, which mm -hmm. is weird. You know, I didn't want that because I didn't want people to feel like they need to belong to a certain uh, group before they can approach uh, us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So having you, I mean, speaking about your uh, or let's talk about your audience and it's a big audience. <laughs> Let's put it that way on Instagram, for example. So you also attract a lot of these creatives. Do you find yourself in these like very specific groups of, of creatives that only photographers or only, I don't know, I don't even know how to describe it. Maybe just only photographers. I guess the only reason I'm asking this is because I want to see who Alex is. Like, is Alex just a photographer or do you also like other things that you just don't share on your Instagram? Because obviously your Instagram is all about portrait photography, mm -hmm. but is there something else about you that you just you just haven't shown the audience? Yeah, absolutely. I I definitely I would say photography is probably twenty percent of who I am, mm -hmm. um, and I I definitely I used to find myself in sort of little groups of photographers, and that was kind of during a different time where the community had a slightly different setup. Um, I don't see myself being in a group like that anymore um i i did feel like it just suddenly turned into like high school drama yeah <laughs> for no reason <laughs> yeah and that stressed me out because i don't i don't really do that yeah I, yeah i just that just stresses me out so <laughs> it's pointless um i'm happy that it is sort of dissolved and everybody has more so gone their separate ways and i have individuals that i still have like very deep connections with for example my friend John, he's one of my best friends, he's a photographer. John Snip, super talented, shoots an entirely different genre of portraits than I do, but we work together all the time, um, both on a business level and on a creative level, and we collaborate a lot. And those are the connections that have stayed and that I feel like are very healthy and, and beneficial. But I do feel like these these cliques and groups can sometimes be problematic. Yeah. Um, but yes, I do a ton of other stuff. I, I take martial arts classes right now, I'm taking I'm trying to remember, I was previously taking art eight classes a week, but I just this week I'm taking on two more classes for the first time. So it'll be 10 classes a week between martial arts, kickboxing, Tai Chi, and I think there's one meditation class in there. Um, <laughs> you have to balance it out. Yeah, a little bit, you know. Because <laughs> the rest of it, you're just kicking like everyone's asses. <laughs> <laughs> have to kind of balance um, it out. <laughs> So, so I do that and that's really fun and that's kind of its own community, of course, like the martial arts school is really cool and offers a ton of very different life viewpoint and input, very different approach from, you know, our creative and social media and marketing approach. Those are their own corner. And, and then, um, uh, and then I, I'm in a relationship, my boyfriend, he is actually a comedian. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So he's, um, so that's an entirely different than yeah. group of people. I've met some of his friends. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's a totally then also new approach and way of, of looking at things and, and experiencing the day to day life. So, okay. So that um, kind of answers the question that I wanted to follow up with. So I guess the question that I wanted to follow up with is how do you, like, how do you feel being tagged as Alex, the photographer? Does that make you kind of, you know, stick to your stomach? You're like, ugh, that's not really me. You know what I mean? So no. you you know, I guess for me, in the beginning, I felt kind of like that when they said, oh, Michael, he likes to take pictures of uh -huh. his desk, which is really dumb. But um, <laughs> it really is dumb if I, I, I have admitted this so many times because um, that's really how it grew, my social media. Um, completely honest, I just took a picture of my desk because this was like back in like three, three years ago. And that's I'm so like, fun. I had a small desk not a small desk, a really plain desk with one computer. And I'm like, this is the first time I'm working from home and I got laid off from a job. So let me take a photo of my desk and see how it evolves. So I, mm -hmm. I originally posted graphic design stuff. I'm not the mm -hmm. greatest graphic designer out there, but so I figured that, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to make this Instagram account my own thing. So I'm take a picture of my desk and kind of see if I can, if I can improve it. You know, and I didn't know like a desk, this whole desk setup thing was the thing. It kind of grew. And so I've been trying so hard ever since then to move away from it for for the last three years. Because I'm like, mm -hmm. 
and get people introduce me michael is the desk guy i'm like that's so funny <laughs> like oh my gosh someone even asked me do you do you sell desks i'm like i don't <laughs> I don't oh, sell no. desks, but I appreciate oh, no. you asking. I just don't. So oh, no. yeah, so I guess um, I've I've managed to to move away from that, thankfully. Mm -hmm. um, so now it's really just about me sharing the things that I like. That's all it mm -hmm. is. And so and uh, part of that is also uh, basically talking to other creators and creatives. That's one of the things that I do enjoy. And so that's kind of like what has happened to me. Now in the, in, the, in the sense, but I'm glad to to hear that side of your 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 story, your life, because it basically answers my question. Like you, you, I don't imagine you frustrated because you you have yourself well divided, I guess enough. You spread out enough that so. yeah, you're not sick of one thing. Your life is very uh, rich with variety. I would say that. So yes, sometimes like a little it. too much variety. Sometimes I get a little <laughs> distracted, you know what I mean? And then I'm like, oh, right, I have a career. <laughs> uh, Self-employment, it's a little confusing. Sometimes you forget that you're employed, you know? Yeah. Can you speak a little bit more about that? Because a lot of people, and I know, you know, myself included, when I first met photographers, freelance photographers, I'm like, man, I would love to work for myself. What's, what is it like to work for yourself, Alex? Is it really all that it's cracked up to be? Um... I really do think it primarily depends on your relationship with yourself and how good you are at being disciplined. And by disciplined, I don't mean how good you are at being a workaholic. Uh, yeah. I mean, how good are you at finding the balance? Mm -hmm. um, because for me, it truly was just years of being a workaholic. And I've been a workaholic since I was three years old. <laughs> um, you know, like I learned to, I learned to play the violin when I was three. I learned to read and write when I was four. That's when my mom tried to put me into school they wouldn't take me they were like she's a child <laughs> she just belonged to school she's but she four. drove herself here <laughs> um <laughs> i'm like driving the car <laughs> no i um yeah and you know I, I i finished school like three years early and i i've always i've always been about achievement and work and like the product i've always been about the product and mm -hmm. it's been a very long journey of evolving into not caring so much about the result and not defining myself via the result and so now i've i've you know tried to come away from those 18 hour work days and because it's it's very easy you know when you are a disciplined person and you're self-employed suddenly you are addicted to work mm, because nobody mm -hmm. will stop you yeah you'll just keep working mm -hmm. So then to, to find that structure and for me, you know, was a lot of martial arts and a lot of social engagements and like scheduling game nights with my friends and playing more of the piano and all of that. Those are the things that we can then kind of scoot into our schedule uh, that will make us stop working. So that's what worked for me. But I, th I think self-employment is all about the balance. That's very true. What you just said. I think that's the challenge there really to set those boundaries because no one's telling you when no. you should stop. Right? No. Can I also just say that you are doing a lot of things? <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I, do a lot, I do a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> you also play the piano. You play the violin, play the piano. You do martial arts. <laughs> what else do you do? You, you direct. You've directed. You just said you, yeah, 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 yeah. you directed. I don't, I don't as much anymore now, but I, I used to. So what other passion, what's one passion that, that you can share that you think that most, I guess, people would probably wouldn't have guessed? Um, or are I mean, you I, basically I, um, an open book? Like what they see is what they get. I, um, I'm into so many. I'm into so many things. Um, <laughs> I'm super. I'm I'm super into psychology. That's actually my primary passion. I would say much higher than photography. I'm, really, I've been uh, studying psychology just on my own since I was like 14, 15 years old. And so right now I'm learning a lot about um, the origins of ADD, attention deficit disorder. I think it's a really prevalent, um, you know, thing that a lot of people my age experience. I think it's kind of a generational thing and part of our generational trauma. Mm -hmm. And so um, those like that kind of like social psychology and, and behavioral psychology and also then um, abnormal psychology, those are those interest me um heavily i'm also very into painting I, I like painting i have some paintings on my wall i don't at this point alex i feel like you're just 
You're just throwing anything out there. Oh yeah, I'm also into this. I'm just kidding, by the way. <laughs> I, will, I will pull up a painting. Okay. It's very opposite of my, um, it's very opposite of my photography. It's just, I just paint in black and white. How cool is that? Thanks. Yeah, so it's just, uh, it's just an alternate, because I think we need different, but similar mediums. So I'm like, visual art, great. Photography, nice, need something else. Painting. So, yeah. Oh, I love that. I think that's the best way to, to kind of wrap this whole thing up. Just because I approach this, uh, this conversation. Hang on. Do you hear the airplane? <laughs> Okay, because yeah. I, I live near an airport, so can you just, <laughs> here we go. No, again. not here at all. The mic is totally tuned Okay, good, perfect. Yeah, because there's like jets and stuff, and I'm like, hey. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, so I approach, I, I, when I started this, this, this conversation, the beginning of this conversation, I was expecting it to be like, okay, let's talk, let's talk to Alex and let's talk about photography and all that stuff. Well, I was wishing secretly that I would pull something out of this conversation other than photography. Little did I know I'll be pulling out martial arts, psychology, <laughs> painting. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh my gosh, this, like, what do we talk about? But that's, that's, that to me, that's like spoken like a true artist, because I think an artist and it's in, um, in essence, I think creativity is taking a bunch of different things and making something new out of it. And I think that's what you're doing with your life from my observation, right? Like you're Aww. taking so many different things and it's so wonderful, wonderful and refreshing to hear someone do that and approach life that way. You don't have to shoehorn yourself in one thing because you're looking for acceptance or this is the only thing I'm good at. It's good to experiment. It's good to try something else. And at the end of it all, even let's just say, let's pretend that none of it worked. I mean, look at the experience that you that you got from all of that, right. right? That is so enriching and just, I don't know, that just makes for a better story when I'm 80 years old, right? <laughs> like if you think about it, so that's, that's really, I don't know, that's really nice. I appreciate you sharing that Thank side you. of you. Wow. I appreciate you opening up. Um, and let's just say I'm really, really surprised to find that there's more to Alex Miller than just a different name. <laughs> And photography. Yeah, don't tell anyone about that. That's a secret. That's a secret. <laughs> right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut that from the podcast. No, 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 no. No, it's just funny because I've never actually. I, I don't think I've ever said that. Yeah. On a well, podcast I'm honored. <laughs> I'm honored. <laughs> this is the first. So, well, Alex, I really, really appreciate you finding the time. I'm not gonna keep you any longer because, luckily, lucky for you, I have a sore throat because otherwise, <laughs> you will be here for the next three hours. But, um, well, you know, I do have that kickboxing class. Oh, so. yeah. So there you go. Where can people find you, Alex, if they wanted to, to get in touch with you or look through your stuff? Uh, can you share it with us, please? Um, yes. On Instagram and on TikTok, I'm Liquid Verve. And then my website is liquidverve.com. Um, I have been teaching for over three years and I, I do have all kinds of photography courses on my website. If you'd like, I can definitely provide you with, um, with a discount code for the podcast. Absolutely. Please do that. Alex, thank you so much for being here. Would love to chat with you again next time when you're not, when you're not busy doing everything else in the world. It seems like you're doing everything. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so Thanks I have so to schedule like two years in advance <laughs> to just see how Alex is doing. So. <laughs> But thank no, you. No, this was wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs>